It's good to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. Israel and Hamas are at war, sparked after the Palestinian militant group launched surprise cross-border raids from Gaza, killing more than 1,400 people and taking hostages. The death toll is now over 5,000 and the humanitarian crisis is spiraling amid warnings that people are at risk of starvation as Israel tightens its chokehold on the territory. Many of Israel's Western allies, such as the United States and a number of European countries, have condemned the attacks by Hamas and expressed solidarity for Israel. While countries of the Muslim world have expressed support for the Palestinians, blaming the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories for the crisis. Across Africa, official reactions to the war have been missed. Besides the pro-Israel and pro-Palestine alignment, there are also campaigns for a ceasefire with a neutral position similar to the two-state solution as proposed by the United Nations. Kenya, Ghana, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo have expressed support for Israel. Algeria, Tunisia, South Africa and Sudan have expressed support for Palestine. Some others on the Palestinian side have taken the, their position with more caution by advocating for an end to the conflict while highlighting that the occupation of Palestine by Israel is the cause of this escalation in the first place. Chairperson Mwasa Faki Muhammad, for instance, used this approach on behalf of the African Union. Nigeria and Uganda have chosen to take a neutral stance. For some insights into the continent's leaders' reactions, alignments, and the wider implications of the war for Africa, I am joined by ATK Opa, a global affairs analyst. Thank you very much for giving us your time. Well, thank you for having me live in studio. Good to have you, actually. Good to see you in person. Uh, so, one newspaper puts it this way. African leaders are trying to walk the line between strongly held principles, diplomatic expediency and empathy in the wake of unfolding carnage in the region. Some say it is more a diplomatic expediency than anything else. What's your view? Again, you know, the African nations, you know, they don't have the strong leadership. So you, what you see is not the AU, African Union has come out and said one, one thing or the other, which they shouldn't. Uh, you know, the situation going on in, in, in Palestine and Israel is very touchy. Since that country, uh, 1948, when uh, the state of uh, Israel was created and then Israeli people settled over there, it has always been tension. Uh, it has been a two-party solution. There has been all kinds of stuff, you know, Yasser Arafat, um, you know, and uh, Anwar Hazard, uh, Anwar um, uh, Sadat. And the American begin, I think at a the time they won Nobel Prize, you know, for a peaceful thing. But, you know, it has, it has continued. And then you have the U.S. support for Israel, and then, some, you know, sometimes there is sympathy for what is going on uh, uh, with the Palestinians. But at the end of the day, it's like, how can two neighbors find peace to be together? The African uh, government and leaders that have taken a side, and the other ones that have taken a side, you know, it is to be expected because you know you say it one way or the other then you're going to have either the u.s coming after you say you shouldn't have said that or you yeah, the other side will say you should have um so th that's where we are but for me as somebody who looks at this thing from a, a, a bigger picture you know uh, the palestinians are having a freedom i mean they're have, having a freedom fight they want they want freedom in their country they want independence and then, you know, freedom fighters are oftentimes, you know, given this global tag name of what's terrorist. But they are justified in their action. And then the Israelis are also justified in their actions because they have the right to live. So how do two neighbors, how do two neighbors come together to stop this onslaught where civilians and military and their children are being killed? So my view is, can we get to a point where there's peace in that part of the region? You know, as much as, you know, people say Israel is a holy land, can we have a holy existence? Can we have something that prevails on the minds of these people to do what? Lay, lay down the arms. So no, no matter what anybody says, the two people have to come to a solution to have a peaceful coexistence. 
uh, we're hoping that will be the case. It's a really complicated uh, conflict. I could barely wrap my head around the issue. So let's see um, what does this conflict mean for Africa. We have the um, Russian-Ukraine war already. We now have this um, in Israel. And so far, 5,000 lives have been lost. What is the implications of this war on Africa? Again, Africa is not even peaceful. I mean, you have Boko Haram going on. We have the Rwanda, you know, DRC going on. And all, all, I mean, you have the Southern Sudan thing going on. You know, again, this is a case of your house is on fire, but you are there concerned about what's going on with your neighbor. Of course, we have to show up and, and make comments about global issues. But at the end of the day, is Africa peaceful? You know, are people within the same country having, you know, the type of lifestyle, the type of leadership that makes them want to be very comfortable and confident in their own country. So when they, you know, this, the implication of this is, again, you have the global powers interested in that, and they're going to want Africa some kind of way to say something. And then when you say something, somebody's going to be, what, angered. And somebody's going to say, again, like I said earlier, you should or you shouldn't have. So let Africans take a position. We want peace in the world. We want Israelis and the Palestinians to come to terms about love thy neighbor. I mean, come on, you know, don't we have this golden saying that you have to love thy neighbor? But if that's not going to be the case, take care of your own home. Let's, let Africa lead us, let Africa become a continent that has this sort of global influence that, so that when the president of an African country picks up the phone and call, you know, they are paid attention to, they are listened to. But right now, nobody pays attention. I mean, you know, people have been flying, uh, uh, the guy in South Africa, you know, Ramaphosa has gone over there to make statement. Who cares about him? Or is it is it the guy in Kenya or in Uganda or Nigerian president? So I, th I think Nigeria has taken a neutral position. Let's see how this thing goes. Because then at home, you know, things are not going very well for Nigeria right now. So you can't you can't afford to be out there making statement when people are going to look at you and say, "How is your home? Go you know, how is your home country?" So I, I was going to ask uh, for the reason behind some of the statements that we're getting from some African leaders. We know that uh, as of 2020, uh, there was a clear statement that a support for Israel for Kenya um, translates to, um, I mean, was part of the the, the contractual. Uh, rules for a trade deal with the U.S. at some point. There is clear uh, support for um, Israel uh, by the U.S. and other Western um, uh, countries. So one would wonder, they have their reasons. What would be behind African uh, governments, aside from this one now that we, as of 2020, we don't know whether that is the same reason uh, they're choosing to um, take a stance on the war at the moment, but what is the driving force uh, behind the submissions being made, including Nigeria, for instance? You said you're taking a neutral position for this reason. So the, the reasons are more aligned to self-interest. Am I correct? Well, there's always self-interest, and then when you have self-interest, there's always an ego. Every president, whether in a developed country or a de uh, uh, developing one, they always have ego. And they all want to project, you know, a certain level of confidence that, you know, here the box stops with me. But again, you look at the 54 African countries, how many of them are actually viable on the international scene? How many of their foreign ministers actually, when they step, step out on the stage, anybody pays attention? I mean, you know, the equivalent of a foreign minister in the U.S. case is the Secretary of State. If the Secretary of State comes here, U.S. Secretary of State coming, it's like the president is coming. But if the Nigerian Minister of Foreign Affairs goes anywhere, who cares about who he is or she is? So, and then you have the U.N. You know, the U.N., if it's an African situation, what does Africa get? Africa gets peacekeeping force. But Israel has said, we don't want peacekeeping force. And the U.S. hasn't impressed upon them to have that. So that's why you have this war going on. And is is because again, who again is going to speak up to you know America and say don't do this? When you do it, there's a consequences for it if you don't take the same position uh, with America. You know, China has played a neutral role. Uh, Russia, of course, you know, Russia is out there uh, supporting uh, Syria. All that war Syria has had for as long as it's had it, nobody has said anything. So that the African side of it is because 
they have to look at, okay, what do I get? You know, U.S. might say, hey, say this so that we make it look like it's a global thing. But if you look at it, how many people from the South America, they, they don't care. And the Mexican president haven't said it, the Brazilian people haven't said anything, because to them it's like, hey, we have our own domestic issues. We don't want to be drawn into this neighborhood and neighbor thing. You know, just like you have the Ukraine and the Russian. These, these are neighborly things. Can you guys, you know, like we said in America, can you guys get it together? And, you know, you see the amount of money American government gives Israel. I mean, there's a $30 million daily that's sent to Israel. No other country in the world gives that kind of support. And then he makes so many other Palestinian Americans say, hey, this is taxpayers' money that you send into one particular country. Can we to get something? Well, Hamas is not a formal military unit of any government. It's a freedom fighter. And when you do this freedom fighting thing, you stand the chance of being called a name a terrorist. You know, but again, you know, he who has the biggest microphone is going to do what? Be the loudest, even if it is a fake news or the real news. All right, let, let's um, reel it in and see how we can, uh, you know, whatever happens over... Uh, in the Western world, uh, impact on Africa in some way or the other for obvious reasons, um, trade relations and um, investment and all of that. I I'd like to know from you, uh, from the responses given so far, in my introduction, I talked about Kenya, Ghana, uh, DRC supporting Israel, and then I also mentioned the fact that other, some other countries are supporting Palestine. And then there are those who are choosing to be neutral and those who are advocating for a discussion as to using the two-state uh, solution. My question is, has any of these responses from African government uh, been a surprise to you or made you pause and um, wonder why they are choosing the position they are taking? Again, there's always something. There's always, you know, what am I going to get out of this kind of situation? You know, if you come out and publicly support me, uh, then I'm going to be able to help you. But at the end of the day, you said, what is that support? What is that? What am I getting? What is my country? How does my position, you know, support my conscience? You know, yes, you know, if you do this for me, I do that for you kind of situation. That's how these politics, global issues are driven. But at the end of the day, you know, you look at the citizens, I mean, the children, the destruction that are happening, and then it calls to question, okay? You know, they, they, the, the thing is that the Hamas launched the, 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 the rockets, you know, or the bombs that did what, and then Israel has to retaliate. That's natural. Action and reaction is equal and opposite. Uh, so the African countries, you know, for those of them that are chanting support for Israel because, you know, America wants to see, you know, now they say the global alliance. So they, America don't want to come out and say, ah, we are the only ones. So they're going to find the countries that are going to side with them. And then the other side are going to look for their own. You know, it's more like a chess game. You know, who is cheering for us? Who is clapping for us? Okay. You know? Beyond the show of support or this support, as the case may be, um, what in your view uh, how, in your view, has African governments and organizations been involved in diplomatic efforts to bring about a, pro a, a possible ceasefire and broker peace between Israel and Hamas? Are they even pulling their weight in any way? Well, there, again, is a credibility factor. So uh, the thing is, is it AU? AU is not as powerful and influential as the European Union. And then you go down to the 54 African head of, head, you know, heads of state and said, who amongst them has the biggest microphone? And when they get on the stage, you know, somebody's going to listen to them. That's the, that's the real question. It's not just going in there and be part of the chorus line and cheering for one, one side or the other. The thing is, who, res who, who is that African president that is respected? I mean, let's, let's be realistic. Nigeria is the giant of Africa. Is it the Nigerian president that when they get on the stage, people pay attention? Because they think, what are you going to offer? Are you going to offer military rule? Are you going to offer financial rule? Uh, or are you going to say, hey, we're going to place sanction on this side? They can't they can say that. You know? So everything they do is more like cosmetic. It's more like show up. You know, let's, let's be seen, but ne let's not be heard. And, 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 and that's the thing. So, I, again, I think Africa should take a position on this kind of thing through their AU, not individual African countries say, hey, this is the statement AU has for the global issues because we have to recede back home and they look at our own situation. We have more conflict. We have more people dying in Africa. 
you know, and nobody talks about it. But then anything that happens in Ukraine, Russia is a big war, global news, and everything happened, Hamas, Israel, is another deal. How about the African situation? You know, we go look at it. How many people are getting killed every day between Rwanda and DRC? How many, how many people even talks about that? Has AU come out and say, we got to put a stop to this? Or then the anything going on between Chad, you know, with all the military you know, coups and France? So your house is not in order, and you're going to come out and want to the world to pay attention to you. They're just going to basically laugh at you. But they, they welcome you to show up. <laughs> um, I, I, I would have a follow-up to that, but I, I, I can't. You, you, okay, let me go ahead and ask it. It might sound naive, but then again, it, does it really matter whether you have your own internal struggles, if there is something you can do? or there is um, um, uh, something you can say to help a peace process in another uh, location? Of course, you, I mean, look, in America, we have issue. We haven't even elected our speaker. The one we had, you know, got, got, got voted out. So America has its own thing. But even, even with the internal issues going on in America, America is still able to come out and present a front, you know, that makes everybody in the world pay attention. I mean, it's all about attention and getting, getting that, you know, listen to. So my point is, yes, you want a peace. We want peace. But when you say it, you know, it's just like two kids fighting in a home. If they don't have a respect for the, for the parents, they're not going to, they're going to keep doing it. But if the parent is sort of like the authority figure, remember, this is about authority. This is about influence. And there's always a consequence. If you don't do this, I do that. So when the African people said, hey, this is, we want peace and we take this position. If they don't do it, what are they going to do? You know. So I was going to ask about the maybe the economic or trade um, uh, implications, but we've talked about the alignment or the statements that's been given by some of these African countries. Obviously, there is some uh, personal interest. You're trying to protect your personal interest. So I'll just go ahead and ask, what do you think are the long-term implications of the Israel-Hamas war on African countries and their relations with the parties involved? Well, the, the immediate country to uh, an African country that is immediately next to uh, Hamas and Israel is Egypt. Egypt yeah. and, uh, and Egypt is doing their best. Egypt has allowed some, some convoy you know, of uh, humanitarian support to get, to get across. But I Israel has even said, hey, Egypt has said, hey, I'm not taking any refugees. Because again, you don't know who you're getting into your country. They're already overwhelmed. And now they're going to take in some more people that, and then usually when this thing ends, you don't see the refugees going back. A lot of them want to stay back. And then you now inherit by default, not necessarily by design, uh, certain people you don't know what to deal, to do to, or deal, deal with when they're in your country. So what I'm hoping that happens again is, can we have peace? The world hasn't had peace. And then we talk about these things. We give people no, Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, and, and, and still we go back to what I think shouldn't be happening in 21st century. So the African position, again, I said 54 of you, you're always going to have a diverse opinion, speak through your African Union. When things like this happen, send a statement and let it be by vote. The majority of African countries that vote for that particular resolution, let it be what is put out. So that that gives a global protection to, to, uh, to the other countries as opposed to all these what I said, you know, skirmishes, you know, by tiny countries and who don't have anything to do on the global stage, showing up for the showing up sake. You don't want to show up, you want to be present, but at the same time, you want to have the presence and the credibility of being present so that people can pay attention to you. What, 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 what good is it for you when you shout and nobody pays attention? Do you see any end in sight in, the, in this rather long, complicated conflict? Uh, of course, taking into cognizance the international response so far. I mean, again, I, I want to say yes. You know, you know, if I tell you my age, and I mean, when I started reading up on this Israeli-Palestinian uh, thing, if you look at the global map, in 1947, Israel wasn't even in that map. Israel was created you know, in 1948 after the World War ended. And uh, if, you, if you paid attention to the history of Israel having their own nation, there was a choice of having Israel between the land, uh, between, the land between uh, Uganda and, uh, and Libya. That was a choice, but it didn't happen. And, 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 and now they're where they are, and since they have settled, there have been all kinds of issues. You look at where 
Gaza is, and then you look at you know, West Bank, and then you look at Israel. So imagine yourself, you know, the only two countries that have those kind of geographic pain is America having Alaska and Hawaii. You know, we call them the non-contiguous. Uh, but in the bottom 48 states in America, you know, it's a contiguous. So imagine yourself, you know, you in Lagos, but between you, Lagos and, you know, or your state is a gap is another country. And then in order for you to get to your state, which is the country you identify with, you have to go through a visa process, exit card. So there's a lot of things that I think in the creation of Israel that the people who are doing it right now, and if they had a choice to do it, would they do the same thing? Uh, Good you know, question. They, 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 that's, that's, that's a question that may not, we never get an answer because Israel is there to, to stay. Not I think with this anywhere. conflict, it's more of questions than answers, answers. Uh, really. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, to wrap this up, let's just uh, find out um, how much should Africa be invested in this war without losing focus on the issues at home? To me, they shouldn't invest anything. You know, again, just send them good, a message of goodwill and speak through the African Union. So that that will sort of give you a global protection, you know, that, hey, it wasn't Nigeria that said this or Ghana that said this. Because when you say it that way, you, you stand a chance of being picked upon or picked out and we can be dealt with plus or minus. But when you speak through your union, you know, the African Union, then you said, hey, this is the resolution. The majority of us, 54 African heads of state, got together and we voted according, uh, this way. So if they have issue, they have it with the union as opposed to a single African country. You know, that president may be singled out for, oh, you didn't support Israel, and if you didn't support Israel, you didn't stand with America, and as a result of that, we're going to do X, Y, Z. So protect yeah. yourself. It, it is an ego thing, it, you know. Is, is, is I think that would be pretty difficult because, to, uh, I mean, you said it yourself, interests differ, and everybody would want to look out for their best interest, and AU's position is obvious. Uh, they want a two-state solution uh, to the conflict, whereas others are not in support of that. And then there is, of course, the implication, um, is AU strong enough to speak and fight for countries who collectively join them in taking decisions? That's another um, uh, question entirely. But more question, I guess. Thank you so much, EGK, for speaking with us and sharing some insights. We appreciate your time today. Well, thank you for having me. And, and don't you with us wish that we wake up one day and there's no more war? Oh, my. No I actually had that thought you know, this but, very morning. But we individuals run countries and individuals have egos and individuals use power in, in way for or against. And uh, what we have seen in the world is power being used for against things that are causing a lot of havoc. You know? Thank you again. Thank you for having me.